Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Cloud Deep Dive. In today's video, we will talk about Route 53 Resolver Endpoints. I will walk you through what is Route 53 Resolver, what challenges we were facing, and how Route 53 Resolver Endpoints will help you. And in the end, I'll give you a demo how hybrid cloud work with these endpoints. So let's get started. So you know, when we create a VPC, your Route 53 Resolver, it automatically answer all the DNS queries and Route 53 Resolver basically maps to your VPC plus two address. We all know that VPC has few IP addresses reserved and dot two is for their DNS resolver. So whenever a query goes to resolver, this DNS resolver or Route 53 Resolver, it answers all your DNS queries. And the way it does it, that if any query is related to your private hosted zone, if you in your Route 53, you have any private hosted zone, suppose you are querying for lan.cloud.deepdive.org and if it belongs to your private hosted zone, it will be answered by Route 53 resolver and it will be resolved from that private hosted zone. If that query is for a EC2 instance IP address, which is the Amazon domains or uh, Amazon provided DNS, then it will be resolved by the Amazon domain. So first it goes and check with a private DNS. If it finds there, then it's good. Otherwise, the second it goes to Amazon domains and try to resolve it from there. If it does not find in any of these uh, private DNS or Amazon domains, then it goes to the public domain DNS where it does the recursive lookup against the public name servers. And I already explained all this in my previous video as well. I'll provide the link of that video uh, in the description. So if you want to see how DNS resolution work, please go ahead and watch that. Uh, in that I have explained in detail. So that was Route 53 Resolver. Next, let's talk about what challenges we had, which these endpoints solved or helped us. Uh, let's take in hybrid environment where you have a corporate network and you have AWS cloud and many of the organizations are doing it. They have hybrid uh, until they move completely to AWS cloud uh, and your corporate network is connected with AWS cloud uh, via a direct connect or maybe site to site VPN connection. So if any of the server in your corporate network, they need to resolve any DNS. So the very first thing it goes to the DNS resolver and try to resolve it uh, from there. So your DNS resolver will have all the zone files which will be looked up and uh, they will resolve it. So if anything, uh, any DNS name which belongs to your corporate network will be resolved by your DNS resolver. But what if your server tried to call or ping or uh, want to connect with one of the instance by using the DNS name. Uh, can it do it? So what it, it has to do to resolve the DNS name of one of the instance uh, because that is in Amazon domains. For that, you have to go to the Route 53 Resolver only. Route 53 Resolver can resolve it. And to go to that, you have to go to the VPC plus two address, which eventually mapping to your Route 53 Resolver and your MS, it will find out the IP address by using the Amazon domain for that particular DNS. But can we call VPC plus two from outside this VPC? No, because this is private to VPC. We cannot call this IP address from outside the VPC. Only the instances lying in this particular VPC can call this VPC plus two address. Even though your corporate network is in uh, direct, is connected via direct net or site to site VPN connection, you cannot call this plus two dot address from outside your uh, VPC. So next, let's talk about what will happen that if your VPC try to resolve a DNS name of your corporate network. Uh, so we know that whenever uh, any instance need to resolve a DNS, it goes to VPC plus two, which is your Amazon Route 53 uh, resolver. And it tries to find out from a private DNS, Amazon domains or public DNS. And because this DNS resolver does not belong to these two, so it will end up going to public DNS. Uh, so it will do the recursive call in the public DNS. And if your DNS name can be resolved publicly, then it will work otherwise it won't basically what i'm trying to say that route 53 resolver won't directly call your dns resolver like that 
and resolve this uh, IP uh, resolve this DNS name so next how we were um, overcome this challenge and what we were doing earlier before we introduce uh, route 53 resolver endpoints so uh, companies used to uh, have DNS forwarder in their uh, subnets and the way it was working like if the instance in your VPC need to resolve it so they had uh, DNS they, they were they were sending all the queries to the DNS forwarder and the DNS forwarder had uh, uh, rules defined in those that if there is any query for your corporate network send it to DNS resolver and if anything else anything other than your corporate network queries then send it to your plus two dot address because this DNS forwarder is lying within your VPC they can send queries to dot uh, plus two address of your VPC because they are local so the way it it will work that if you have any query for your corporate network it will send to DNS forwarder it will check the rule and if it is related to corporate network it will send it to DNS resolver DNS resolver will resolve and send the IP address back to your instance and then by using your direct connect they can connect with each other and anything else will be sent to your VPC plus 2 and from there it will go to route 53 resolver and it will resolve it accordingly by first going to private DNS then Amazon domains and then public DNS so it's like that that uh, next if your corporate network need to resolve so we talked about that how your VPC will resolve any DNS for a corporate network but what if your corporate network need to resolve any uh, DNS name belonging to your VPC so that will uh, DNS resolver in that we can add the rules that anything related to VPC send it to this DNS forwarder because this DNS forwarder can be accessed from outside your VPC uh, it's not like VPC plus 2 address which is local to your VPC so all the queries from your DNS forwarders related to VPC will be sent to DNS forwarder which eventually will send it to VPC plus 2 which is a route 53 resolver and route 53 resolver will again use your private DNS, Amazon domain and public DNS to resolve that query. So that's what we were doing before the introduction of or before Amazon introduced uh, endpoints. But there were a few challenges with that as well. What if my this DNS forwarder uh, goes down because these are again the instances running in this availability zone what if this availability zone goes down so what if this DNS forwarder had some issue and it's not working so these were kind of a single point of failure which can happen and can break your whole system another thing was like maintenance is another thing somebody has to maintain this DNS forwarder as well so to overcome these things and uh, make it more manageable AWS launched AWS uh, Route 53 Resolver endpoints. So there are two types of endpoints. One is inbound and one is outbound. Let's talk about for both of them. Uh, before I go and talk about uh, endpoints, I just want to tell you one more thing. Uh, after the introduction of these endpoints, uh, how the Route 53 Resolver uh, DNS resolve resolution thing has changed. So in this whole video, I was talking about that route to the resolver first go to private DNS, then Amazon domains, and then public DNS. But after endpoints came into the picture, route 53 resolver rules, very first thing it goes and check is there any uh, endpoints. So if there is any endpoints, it always get priority as compared to your private DNS or Amazon domains or public DNS. So first it goes and check if there is any DN or sorry endpoints. If yes, then it checks those uh, rules associated to, with those. If not, then it checks for your private DNS, Amazon domains and public DNS. So keep that uh, in mind when you're working with the endpoints. So how the endpoints work? Uh, when we create an endpoint, inbound endpoint or outbound endpoint, Basically, it creates an ENI in that particular subnet. So you have to provide to, to a subnet of the VPC where you want to create these linear uh, endpoints and it creates two ENI there. And inbound endpoints are used when the uh, DNS queries are coming from a corporate network to AWS cloud and outbound 
uh, endpoints are used when your VPC want to resolve the DNS, uh, uh, sorry, corporate network DNS. So if in this case we are talking about inbound, so your corporate network DNS resolver will update the zone file of this saying that anything for that AWS cloud, if you want to resolve any DNS name which belongs to AWS cloud, send that query to this inbound uh, ENI and you will get an IP address of that. So you can add it here. So for the servers in your corporate network, they will send a query, DNS query to DNS resolver. In the DNS resolver, you will have a rule saying that anything for the AWS cloud send it inbound. So that query will be sent to inbound because now this is private to your AWS cloud. It can directly access your resolver. So it will go to the route to the resolver and check uh, whether it's a uh, hosted zone or Amazon domain or Republic DNS. So it will resolve and send the uh, result back to this DNS. Similarly, for the outbound, uh, you will again get the ENIs in your subnets. So instance will send your query to VPC plus two, which is your router with the resolver. Now, like I mentioned that before going to private hosted zone, anything else, it will check the endpoints. So it will go to outbound endpoint and in outbound endpoint, we add the rules, which I will show you in the demo as well, what those rule looks like and how they work. So it check the outbound rule and based on the rule, it send the query to your DNS resolver, which will resolve the query and send the IP address back to you. Okay guys, so that's all I wanted to cover in the theory part. Next, we will uh, go to the demo. And for the demo, what we will be doing that we'll create, uh, we'll simulate your corporate environment in AWS. We'll create two different VPC, one for your corporate network, your on-prem and one for your VPC. And we'll try to resolve DNS name from your corporate network for the VPC and from your VPC to your corporate network and we'll see it won't work. And then we'll add our inbound and outbound points endpoints and uh, which will help us to resolve this DNS name from your VPC for your on-prem and from your on-prem to your VPC. So that I will be doing in part two guys and uh, because this video is going a bit at the longer side I, I don't want to uh, make it a 30 or 40 minute video. So I'll see you in the part two, but for that you please subscribe to our channel and press on the bell icon so that you will get notified whenever I upload my part two of this uh, endpoints demo. Uh, till then, thank you so much guys for watching and I'll see you in the part two.